Okay, so welcome to this next video in the theory of probability. In this video, uh, we are going to see uh, the law of the unconscious statistician applied, applied to a bivariate distribution, which is another name for a uh, joint distribution where you have two uh, random variables coming together to make a joint random variable, and only two, you don't have more than two. If you've got more than two, it's known as a multivariate distribution. Okay, uh, so uh, we're going to see the two-dimensional um, two-dimensional analog of the law of the unconscious statistician, and we're going to use it to prove uh, that the expected value of x and y, x multiplied by y, is equal to the expected value of x times the expected value of y, which we use in calculating moment generating functions of certain distributions, for instance the binomial distribution we use this. Okay, uh, so um, or did we use it in the binomial distribution? Um, I'm not sure we did actually, no. Um, uh, anyway, um, <coughs> regardless, we used it somewhere where we were doing moment generating functions. Okay, so, uh, the, so the setup is this. You have, a, um, you have a probability space, an abstract probability space consisting of, you know, a sample space, a set of events, and a probability measure P. Uh, we then have a joint, uh, a joint random variable, X and Y, which is ascribing to every outcome in this uh, abstract probability space. It's ascribing an ordered pair, so it's mapping... Uh, you on to R2, so all uh, all of the outcomes in here, so an outcome little s, is given uh, two uh, real numbers, so x of s, y of s, so it's ascribed an ordered pair, an element of R2. Okay, and we do this such that, um, well, we want the uh, this probability space over here, which we could call uh, omega prime, oh yeah, omega prime, uh, f prime, and uh, p prime, we want uh, this probability space to be uh, homomorphic to this probability space, which just means we want the structure of this to be the same as the structure of this, or at least mirrored in. If they are, if you know, if this map is a um, is a bijection, uh, then uh, the two structures will actually be exactly the same, other than the fact that you are using different symbols to denote each outcome. In that case, it's um, analogous to I an the concept of an isomorphism from algebra. Um, you could call it a probability space isomorphism. But if we are, if it's not bijective, it's, if it's not specifically, if it's not um, injective uh, or subjective, it's not, it's not, it's not one of them, uh, not, not either of those, uh, then uh, it, uh, it might be that you are mapping multiple outcomes in here onto the same, uh, to the same element in here, uh, in which case you've got the analog, uh, the analog, um, You've got something analogous to a homomorphism in algebra. Okay, uh, so um, what we want is every event in here uh, to have a corresponding event back here, and we want the probability p prime of that event in here to be the same as the p of the event of the corresponding event back here. That's what uh, is meant by these two probability space structures being homomorphic and this being a joint uh, random variable. Okay, so what we can do now is we can uh, we can set up another function which we could call uh, g, which is going to take in both values x and y. So it's going to take in both of these values x and y, and it's going to plug you out a real number. So we're now going to map. All of these, all of these, we're going to map them onto a real number. So every single uh, ordered pair here is going to get mapped onto a real number. So let's say x of s and y of s is going to be taken onto g of x of s, oh dear, y of s. So we've gone out of the probability space, but never mind. Uh, so this is what, this is a real number, which the s is going to be mapped onto this ordered pair, and then the ordered pair is going to be mapped onto this. And basically, if we view, again, this is going to be, uh, we this is going to map you onto the real numbers, and again, this is going to be a uh, sample space. We could call it omega double prime, and again, we will have a set of events on here, and another, and we could define a probability measure on here. And what we want is for every event in here to have a corresponding event back here, and uh, we want the p double prime of any event in here to be the same as p prime of that corresponding event back here. And then, if this one is uh, homomorphic to this one, and this one is homomorphic to this one, then these two are going to be effectively homomorphic. So you can draw a random variable straight from here, which we could call Z, uh, which is the um, the composition of these two maps. So it's just a single random variable now. And what we'd quite like to know is what is the expected value of this random variable Z, i.e. what is the expected value of uh, little g of big X, big Y. Okay, so 
the law of the unconscious statistician for uh, a bivariate uh, distribution such as uh, x and y here says that this is just equal to uh, the integral from negative infinity to infinity uh, the integral from negative infinity to infinity of g of little x little y times the joint probability distribution um, a probability density function evaluated at xy dx dy and I should just say uh, that if you wanted to um, calculate um, sorry no 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 uh, the, the, so what this is doing uh, this is do um, this is saying okay we want to take the expected value of this uh, so the x and the y values can vary over all values in R2. So if we vary that over all values of R2, this is, in a way, the probability. It, well, when you times it by dx dy, that is, in a sense, the probability that you are in a tiny little, uh, tiny little square of side length, of side lengths uh, dx and dy. Now, uh, so if we then take what is that val what is that point x y mapped onto by this function g of x y? So this is the what it's going to be mapped onto. Then effectively, we're saying uh, this is the value of g x y. This is the probability that it's going to take on that value. Uh, and if we sum it over negative infinity to infinity, negative infinity to infinity, if we sum it over all values of R two, what we're going to add up is every possible value of that g can take on times, in a sense, uh, the probability. Um, uh, the probability that it uh, takes on that value, and you are summing up over all uh, values x and y, uh, over all ordered pairs, so you're summing over the entire of R2, you're integrating over all of R2, so you're going to get every possible outcome here, so effectively that is going to be, that is how, uh, that's what you're doing, you are multiplying the number you get times the probability that you get that number and then you're summing over effectively every single outcome here but the way you're doing it is by summing over every outcome here because every outcome here has a corresponding outcome over here. Okay, so that's the uh, law of the unconscious statistician, the two-dimensional version of it for a bivariate distribution. So now what we can do is we can say, okay, uh, we needed to, wanted to prove that the expected value of x times y was equal to the expected value of x times the expected value of y if uh, x and y were independent, y independent. Okay, uh, so uh, what you can think of is uh, you can think of having a abstract probability distribution here. Uh, you can think of having two random variables, x and y, both mapping uh, this abstract probability space onto the real numbers, such that, uh, again, these are effectively probability space homomorphisms. And then what we can do is we can combine them together to make their joint distribution, uh, x, y, which will map you onto R2. And then what we can do is we can think of taking each point in here and mapping it onto a real number by taking uh, by, okay, so if you have a point here, S, this will be mapped onto some uh, ordered pair, let's say uh, X of S, Y of S, and basically uh, you're going to map that onto a real number by just multiplying X of S by Y of X, S, so you get X of S, Y of S in here. Okay, so that is uh, effectively just a function, so our G of X, Y, G of uh, X, Y, is just going to be equal to X times Y. Okay, uh, so if we want to work out what is the expected value of x times y, the expected value of x times y, well, just applying the law of the unconscious statistician that we've just, the, for a bivariate um, distribution, we can say that this is the integral from negative infinity to infinity of the integral from negative infinity to infinity of uh, the probability uh, the probability density function for the joint random variable as a function of x and y times uh, this value, this function, the value of this function here, which is x times y, uh, times dx dy. Uh, okay, and then if we uh, now we you now is where we use the fact that x and y are independent. So if x and y are independent, then it's true to say that this uh, joint PDF function here is equal to the marginals times one another. So it's the marginal uh, distribution of x, i.e. Uh, just viewing x as a single random variable. Get rid of everything else. Pretend y doesn't even exist. View x as a single random variable on its own. Uh, what's its PDF? That's the marginal PDF of x. Now do the same thing for y. Take the marginal PDF of y. If they are independent, then this uh, 
And then this joint PDF of x and y is just equal to the two multiplied together. And this is x, y, dx, dy. Okay? And then we've got the integral from negative infinity to infinity of the integral from negative infinity to infinity. Okay, uh, so uh, now what we can say is um, what we can say now is that um, firstly, uh, if we do the first integral, which is dx first, so we're integrating with respect to x first. Well, y is just a constant as far as that integral is concerned, so we can pull out all these terms that only depend on y. So we can say that this is the integral from negative infinity to infinity of the marginal of y. Uh, the marginal uh, PDF of y as a function of y times y, and then we've got times the integral of negative infinity to infinity uh, f, the marginal of uh, the random variable x as a function of x times x dx, and then what we'll have to do is integrate dy. But this, this you should recognize as just the expected value of x. Uh, this, remember, is the PDF imagining that none of these other ran this other random variable and then the joint random variable uh, don't exist. So uh, this is just the PDF of x uh, times x. That's just the expected value of the random variable x. Now, this is just a constant. So if we think of this integral, this is the integral from infinity to negative infinity, uh, well, negative infinity to infinity, rather, um, of f the uh, marginal distribution of y, the marginal probability density function of y, times y, times this constant, the expected value of x, dy. We'll just pull out the expected value of x, and we get this is the expected value of x times the integral from negative infinity to infinity of the marginal probability density function of um, the random variable y as a function of y times y dy. But then this is just the expected value of y because this marginal uh, probability density function is just pretend the other random variable x doesn't exist. What's, uh, what's the PDF of y? Uh, so this is just the expected value of y. So we get that the expected value of um, of x times y is just equal to the expected value of x times the expected value of y uh, from, uh, and we derive this from, two-dimensional Lotus. So this uh, result that we needed in our discussion of moment generating functions, we can now, uh, well, we haven't proven the two-dimensional Lotus. We've given good intuition as to why it's true. Uh, but if two-dimensional Lotus is true, then this result follows straight away.